So welcome back to the channel and to this LSD update. We have a rocket pool overview here. We're gonna talk about the tokenomics, how you can use our ETH and what improvements need to be made and what improvements are coming up for this protocol. And if you enjoy this one, you know what to do. Okay, starting here, we have the liquid staking governance tokens. And as we know, we just covered Lido Finance recently. The LDO token makes up the biggest market cap and it stakes the most ether. So Rocket Pool is the number two contender here and one I think that can really close the gap on Lido. It has superior decentralization over Lido, but it hasn't got that kind of mass of ETH behind it just yet. So Lido's ahead in terms of the amount of state ether, but it's highly centralized. Rocket Pool is solving the decentralization conundrum, but needs more ETH on it. So let's try and see what's going on with this one. Here is the RPL token. It's roughly 25 bucks right about now. Had a heck of an opening to this year and one thing you will notice is the circulating supply is the same as the total supply this should be actually chalked out the max supply is in theory infinite because there is five percent per annum inflation for this token but more on that later in the video it makes up a key component of the tokenomics so here is the derivative asset if you stake your eth with rocket pool you get our eth in return and as you can see the value of our eth is greater than that of eth as it captures the value the staking rewards in terms of utilizing this across Across DeFi, you can see it's on Balancer, Uniswap, but also some markets that aren't currently listed on here. So this does need a bit of an update. But as you can see, there is deep liquidity here across DeFi pools. So you can swap between ETH and our ETH quite easily. So let's start here with the decentralization metrics. As you can see on screen, currently around 350,000 ETH are staked with Rocket Pool but this is across 1,938 node operators. That's a hugely wide distribution and very impressive compared to that of the competition. Node operators running across 107 different regions here, as you can see from this neat graphic. As per the ethos of Ethereum, this is for everyone. You can run these nodes at home. So let's do a quick little comparison between Lido and Rocket Pool here. As you can see, the ST ETH and R ETH are the different staking derivative tokens. Lido has a rebasing mechanism, whereas Rocket Pool is reward bearing, i.e. our ETH is going up in value over time. The commission on Lido is just 10%, whereas it is 15% currently on Rocket Pool, but that does get paid purely to the validators, whereas on Lido, 5% goes to validators and 5% to the DAO. And Rocket Pool has over 1,900 validators, as we just saw, but Lido has just 27 showing huge centralization risks. So this is something to really bear in mind when you stake your ETH with one of these LSDs. Do you want to contribute to the centralization of Ethereum or not? There's significant tail risks, I would say, with staking with Lido at this moment in time until they improve their decentralization. Now on screen over at DeFi Llama, you can see the percentage market share for each of these various LSDs. The pink down here is that of Rocket Pool. It's gone from around four, four and a half percent up to around five to 5.35% 5 almost currently. And as you can see from the blue at the top, the amount of market share for Lido has been slowly creeping down. So slow progress being made by Rocket Pool, but I think this will continue and they will eat up more market share during the course of 2023 with some major upgrades we're gonna discuss. So you have two options when you come to Rocket Pool. You can stake and run the node itself. So this would make you a node operator and this would require you to post up 16 ETH yourself and then you would be allocated another 16 ETH from the staking pool to your validator from these guys here. These are kind of like the normies, maybe just me and you. We could start staking here with just 1% of an Ethereum. Being a node operator requires a bit of know-how, technical expertise, 16 ETH in collateral, and of course, good maintenance and uptime. But for that, you do get higher commission. So you get 15% commission from the normies, taking the APR from around 6.97, whereas a normal staker gets around 4%. This is all non-custodial they can't rug you of your funds but there are slashing risks involved with staking ETH but Rocket Pool uses an insurance model utilizing the RPL token to reduce the potentiality of ETH being slashed itself. So here is the actual Rocket Pool interface. You would come connect your wallet, enter in the amount of ETH in your wallet, however many you want to stake and then you would receive our ETH once that deposit is confirmed and as you can see the average return currently around 4.1% APR. So you've successfully got some our ETH. Where can you use it. Now this is not an exhaustive list 
on DeFi Llama. There are a few more protocols I found that you can use our ETH within, but these are some of the main ones. And as you can see from the TVL on the right hand side, millions of dollars in TVL on these various projects at the top. But as we go down the list, maybe this is one of the weaknesses for our ETH right now. Not too many protocols it's tapped into as of yet. This list's just 24 and not huge TVL as we go down the list. Whereas if we compare our ETH with ST ETH for Lido, business development is a lot better on Lido. They also use Lido rewards very generously to try and incentivize its usage. And that shows huge TVL, as you can see on the right hand side, and tons of protocols that it's engaged with as well. So from that standpoint, if you're utilizing your staked Ethereum across DeFi and you've got our ETH, there are less options than what you would have if you had ST ETH. So this is where work needs to be done, in my opinion. Now, one of the key battlegrounds is going to be over on Arbitrum, the L2. If you've seen some of the stats around Arbitrum, a scary amount of ETH is going over there. And I think this is going to be the home of Ethereum going forward for normal retail participants, especially when ETH L1 usage becomes very expensive when gas costs go up. Arbitrum certainly looks to be the most favored L2. And so I think our ETH needs to be utilized more over on Arbitrum. So some business development work may be needed. One of the Arbitrum protocols here, Vendor Finance, this is a borrow lend protocol. It's not listed on DeFi Llama as of yet, but they do have our ETH enabled over on here. So you could collateralize your our ETH and on the flip side, take out maybe a stable coin against it or maybe wrapped Ethereum. And at that point, the L2 Arbitrum is really at your own mercy as stables and wrapped Ethereum are utilized absolutely everywhere. During some investigation work over on Twitter as well, I found that they are teaming up with Polygon as well. That is a notable L2 environment, which could also be bullish for the usage of our ETH cross chain. Now let's take a moment to look at the bullish catalyst ahead for Rocket Pool ETH and also the RPL token as well. So this is the only token in the liquid staking derivatives that really does capture value from the growth of the amount of staked ETH it takes on. So currently each node operator is required to stake 16 ETH for themselves. So this does require a bit of a barrier to entry. That's around 16,000 bucks plus. And maybe for a home user, you might be able to spin up one or two but the likelihood of you doing multiples beyond that is quite unlikely for many, so out of the reach for most. But in Q1, i.e. the first three months of this year, they're introducing LEBs, Lower ETH Balance Mini Pools. So these mini pools of 16 and 16 will now start to become 8 and 24. This will enable rapid growth for our ETH. So imagine you can currently run one mini pool and you've got 16 ETH collateral. Well, now you can split that up into two, supply that balance of 8 ETH across two mini pools, and then you'll be paired up with 24 ETH from the general pool. So this will be a huge increase in capacity and our ETH growth will go through the roof once this occurs and it also will help decentralize the network even further. As this states, it will essentially triple our overall capacity of Rocket Pool to mint our ETH near instantly. So this is definitely a bullish catalyst. This is called the Atlas Upgrade and post this, they're also hoping to introduce four ETH mini pools as well. So this could go exponential. So this is the current TVL growth of our ETH. That captures the majority of 2022, but I expect that to go up like a hockey stick with the Atlas upgrade. Now here's where the tokenomics really fine tune and are impressive with this. So the node operators are required to stake RPL, the token, as an insurance promise to prevent bad actors. And of course, if there are any slashing costs, it will get taken from RPL first and hopefully preserve all the ETH rewards. So as a node operator in the current setting, you have to provide 16 ETH. As a minimum though, you're required to provide 10% of that collateral in the Rocket Pool token, i.e. 1.6 ETH worth of RPL for every node you wanna spin up. So as you can see, the more nodes that come online, the more RPL that must be locked. And 10% is just the minimum. The maximum is 150% of the ETH collateral. But why the heck would you wanna do that? Well, that's down to the inflation rate. So the annual inflation rate is 5% on the RPL token. The more RPL you're staking as a node operator, the greater your claim on that inflation. So if you're bullish on RPL overall, as a node operator, you're gonna to wanna to hoard that. And as we can see from the stat down here, approximately 40% of our RPL is currently locked inside the protocol in just under 12 months. And this is insurance collateral for 
the staked ETH. So in my opinion, a very good flywheel that will see the RPL token market cap go up over time. And just to add out of that 5% per annum inflation, 70% of that goes to the node operators who are staking RPL, 15% to the Oracle treasury. They also have to stake RPL and 15% to the DAO treasury. Now this tweet caught my eye. Ryan Salkis of Masari asking what are the main themes you want us to look at? And then Johnson here replying, risks and opportunities surrounding LEB8, the Atlas upgrade we just talked about, dispersing the nodes with Obel Network DVT, that is distributed validator technology, and rehypothecating the stake with Egan Layer. This again is something else we're gonna to have to dive into on the channel. Egan Layer is coming, and this allows for the restaking of state ETH. So in this post by Jasper the Friendly Ghost, this is an epic post, I'll leave it down below, gives the real bull case for Rocketpool overall. He states that Rocketpool and Egan Layer continue to communicate on how the two protocols can be incorporated in a way that makes profit sharing with our ETH simple. And this relationship between Egan Layer and Rocketpool is mutually beneficial. The Rocketpool ecosystem is the most widely distributed node operator market available on top of Ethereum. Any Egan Layer product that wants to immediately have strong decentralization can target rocket pool operators. So with Egan Layer, the staked ETH can be restaked to provide security for new networks, new applications, a load of different things. And for that, there's of course some risks to do with slashing, but you can also then get an additional APR for tapping into the Egan Layer. So the man leading the charge on Egan Layer is Sriram Kanan. And as you can see from his tweet down there, he seems bullish on Rocket Pool and the ability for individuals running their home nodes to get involved with Egan Layer, helping for decentralization centralization, but this will also mean greater rewards to those node operators as well. So if there's a financial incentive to run a node utilizing Rocket Pool with this kind of partnership, this again will help boost the amount of Rocket Pool nodes and the amount of RETH overall. So I think this will help close the gap in terms of market share on the competitors and namely Lido. I certainly think Rocket Pool here has a very much bullish case within this new era of Ethereum staking. We've weighed up some of the pros and the cons here, some of which are gonna be answered over the course of the next few months and some that just require some business development work. But let me know your thesis on Rocket Pool down below in the comment section and is this one to add to the portfolio? portfolio for the long run. So Rocket ship, get on board. I am bullish, bullish, bullish. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.